let's say that x is equal to 4t plus 5. And let's say that y is equal to t squared minus 8t plus 3. Find the slope and concavity at the given parameter. And that is when t is equal to 2. So how can we do this? In order to find the slope, we need to calculate dy dx when t is 2. So let's find dx dt first. The derivative of 4t plus 5 is simply 4. And dy dt, the derivative of t squared is 2t, and the derivative of negative 8t is negative 8. So dy dx, that's simply going to be dy over dt divided by dx over dt. So that's 2t minus 8 divided by 4. At this point, we can replace t with 2. So it's 2 times 2 minus 8 over 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. And negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. So the slope is negative 1 when t is 2. Now let's find the second derivative in order to determine the concavity at the given parameter. So we need to find a formula for d squared y over dx squared. So this is equal to the derivative of dy over dx with respect to t divided by dx over dt. So we know that dx dt, it was 4. And dy dx, we found it to be 2t minus 8 over 4. So we need to find the derivative of this expression. And then divide it by dx dt, which is 4. So let's simplify this fraction. 2t divided by 4 is basically t it's t over 2, or you can write that as 1 half t. A negative 8 divided by 4, that's negative 2. So the derivative of 1 half t is 1 half, and the derivative of negative 2 is 0. So we have 1 half over 4, and so the second derivative is 1 over 8. Now, because the second derivative is positive, the curve is concave up at this point. That is, when t is equal to 2. Now, if the second derivative was negative, then it would be concave down. But if it's positive, then it's concave up. Keep that in mind. Now, for the sake of practice, let's work on another problem. So let's say that x is equal to t squared minus 2t plus 1. And let's say that y is equal to 2t squared minus 4t cubed. Now let's find a slope and a concavity at t equal, let's make it 3 this time. So feel free to pause the video and try this problem. So I'm going to start with dx dt. The derivative of t squared is 2t, and the derivative of negative 2t is negative 2. Now for this one, the derivative of t squared is 2t, and for t cubed, it's 3t squared. So dy dt is going to be 4t minus 12t squared. So let's begin by determining dy dx. So that's going to be dy over dt divided by dx over dt. So here is dy over dt. That's 4t minus 12 t squared. And then we're going to divide that by dx over dt. So to find a slope, we just need to plug in 3 at this point. So it's 4 times 3 minus 12 times 3 squared divided by 2 times 3 minus 2. So 4 times 3 is 12. 3 squared is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. 12 times 9. 10 times 9 is 90. 
2 times 9 is 18. 90 plus 18 is 108. So this is 12 minus 108, and 6 minus 2 is 4. Now 12 minus 108, that's negative 96. And negative 96 divided by 4 is negative 24. So this is the slope when t is equal to 3. Now let's determine the concavity when t is 3. So recall that dx dt is 2t minus 2. And dy over dx, we said it's 4t minus 12t squared over 2t minus 2. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by a half, just to simplify that expression. So it becomes 2t minus 6t squared divided by t minus 1. Now in order to find the second derivative, we're going to have to uh, differentiate the first derivative dy over dx and then divide that by dx dt. So therefore in order to find the derivative of this expression we need to use the quotient rule. So if you recall the derivative of u over v is v u prime minus u v prime divided by v squared. So u in this case is 2t minus 6t squared and v is t minus 1. So v prime is 1 and u prime it's 2 minus 12t. So following this equation it's going to be v which is t minus 1 times u prime so that's 2 minus 12t and then minus u which is 2t minus 6t squared times v prime, which is just 1, divided by v squared, which is t minus 1 squared. And so that's this part, the derivative of dy dx. And all of this, we need to divide it by dx dt, which is 2t minus 2. So let's see if we could simplify what we have. So this is going to be t minus 1 times 2 minus 12t, and then minus. On the bottom, it's going to be t minus 1 squared times 2t minus 2. Now, the 2t minus 2, you can take out a 2. So it becomes t minus 1 times the other t minus 1 squared, which you can just write that as 2 times t minus 1 cubed. Let me just get rid of this. And then it's going to be 2t minus 6t squared. And we don't have to worry about the 1. So that is the second derivative. We don't have to fully simplify this expression because we're trying to determine the concavity at t equals 3. So at this point, we can plug that number in. So d squared y over dx squared, that's going to be 3 minus 1 times 2 minus 12 times 3 minus 2 times 3 minus 6 times 3 squared over 2 times 3 minus 1 cubed. So now it's just math. So 3 minus 1, that's 2, and 12 times 3 is 36, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 squared is 9, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So 2 minus 36, that's negative 34, and 6 times 9 is 54. 2 to the third power is 8, times 2, that's 16. So we have 2 times negative 34, that's negative 68, and 6 minus 54 that's going to be negative 48. So negative 68 minus negative 48, that's going to be negative 20. So negative 20 is negative 5 times 4. 16 is 4 times 4. And so we can cancel a 4. And therefore, our final answer is negative 5 over 4. So because the second derivative is negative, 
the curve is concave down. Now let's work on this problem. But let's say that x is t squared plus 4 this time, and y is t cubed minus 6t squared plus 5t. Determine the intervals of t where the curve is concave up or concave down. So we need to find a second derivative. But let's find the first one. So dx dt is equal to 2t, and dy dt is going to be 3t squared minus 12t plus 5. So let's write a formula for dy dx. That's going to be 3t squared minus 12t plus 5 divided by 2t. And let's simplify this expression. So 3t squared divided by 2t, that's going to be 3 over 2 times t. A negative 12t divided by 2t, that's negative 6t. I mean, just negative 6. The t cancels. And then we're going to have plus 5 over 2t. Or we could say t to the negative 1. So this is the first derivative. Now let's go ahead and calculate the second derivative. d squared y over dx squared is going to be the derivative of the first derivative with respect to t divided by dx over dt. So what is the derivative of this expression? The derivative of 3 over 2t is 3 over 2. The derivative of negative 6, that becomes 0. And then for this expression, it's going to be 5 over 2 times the derivative of t to negative 1, which is negative t to the negative 2. And the x dt, we can see that it's 2t. So what we now have is 3 over 2 plus, actually minus, 5 over 2t squared divided by 2t. So we need to bring this to the bottom to make the exponent positive. Now to get rid of the fractions on top, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2t squared. So this is going to be, here the 2's will cancel. So I'm going to get 3t squared, and then these will cancel. So that's minus 5 over 4t to the third. Now let's create a sign chart. In order to find the points where the sign may change, we need to set the denominator and the numerator equal to zero. So it can change when t is zero, or if we set 3t squared minus 5 equal to zero, we'll get t squared is equal to 5 over 3, which means t is plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. And as a decimal, that's about 1.291. All the way to the right, we have infinity, and to the left, negative infinity. So let's check the signs. Let's say if we replace t with 2. Will it be positive or negative? 4 times 2 raised to the third power, that's positive. 2 squared is 4 times 3, that's 12, minus 5, that's positive. So it's going to be positive in this region. Now what if we pick a number between 0 and the square root of 5 over 3? Will it be positive or negative? Well, let's try 1. 3 minus 5, that's going to be negative. And 4 over 1 cubed, that's positive, so this is going to be negative. Now what if we try a number in this region, like negative 1? Negative 1 squared times 3, that's 3, minus 5, that's negative 2. So we have a negative on top. If we plug in negative 1 into t cubed, we're going to get negative 4 on the bottom. So two negatives divided by each other, 
will give us a positive result. And let's say if we try a number in this region, like negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 3, that's 12, minus 5, that's 7, so that's positive. And negative 2 to the third power is negative 8, so it's going to be negative on the bottom. Now, once you complete the sign chart, you can determine the intervals where t is concave up, I mean where the curve is concave up and when it's concave down. So it's concave up whenever the second derivative is positive. And so it's going to be concave up between negative square root 5 over square root 3 to 0, union square root 5 over square root 3 to infinity. And if you want to rationalize that, you can write it as the square root of 15 over 3. So it's going to be concave down in this region. So it's concave down from negative infinity to negative square root 15 over 3, and then union square root 15 over 3. I mean, I take that back. 0 to square root 15 over 3. So it's concave down in this region, and then it's concave up in this region. And so that's it for this video. So now you know how to determine the concavity of a parametric curve, and you know how to determine the intervals where it's concave up and concave down. Thanks for watching.